thank you for coming on here with me, I see, for our very first creator finance interview. I appreciate you for being here. So can you introduce yourself, like what you go by and then what you typically, what type of content do you typically create and where can we find you? Um, so my name is Icy Sylvie. Um, I go by she, her usually. I also will accept they, them, um, mostly because I don't consider myself like super gender conforming, but that's just how it is, right? Whatever anyone's comfortable with. Um, I typically stick to Pokemon content a lot these days, but I am a variety streamer for the most part. Um, I've, I've dabbled in a lot of things over the last three years. Um, and I also only do this part time overall because I do work full time and I do like my full time job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I, if I find that, um, streaming is a very uh, creative outlet that you can use as, um, you know, to less get, than um, three part time money and to uh, meet people and express yourself in, in different ways. That is not something I can do at my, my regular job. That's so sweet. So, do so you... yeah, you can find me on all socials as I see okay. Sylvie. I am, I am very, I'm very brand consenting to like everything. Nothing is n labeled any way else. <laughs> no, that's honestly perfect. I always try to tell people, I'm like, guys, you gotta like. Make it really obvious it's you. <laughs> Otherwise, we yeah, go I thought like... about that for a long time because I know it's very common for when people get partnered to like apply for a different name. And mm -hmm. I was like, no, I, I like that all of my names are the same. Yeah, because that's like so uniform. You know, I, whenever mm -hmm. I see Icy Sylvie, I know exactly who it me. is. <laughs> oh, wait. Reg milk. T-Y-T-Y. -T -Y. My, my other housemate's getting me boba. She wants to know what milk oh. I want. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, so um, what are your streams of income as a content creator? And can you give us a breakdown? I know you gave me the info already, mm -hmm. but I am probably going to throw it up like in the edited form. Yeah, I can also talk about in the past too, because oh, I yeah. know things have changed over time too. Like, okay. So like, maybe like, I know I gave you from last month, mm -hmm. but maybe last month, last month I know overall was a little bit bigger for me compared to previous months. And it's also mm -hmm. definitely different from like how things were like even a year ago. Okay. Right. Well, can we first start with maybe your average then? And then we can go into the last month later and talking mm -hmm. about like VTuber promoting, you know, a new model and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, for me on average, I make about five to 600 per month, um, mostly through Twitch. Um, right now I'm not monetized on YouTube because I haven't put the effort in this year. I'm planning to put the effort into it. So I know YouTube is generally a good source for like not only, you know, advertising your Twitch channel and like getting your name out there, but it's also like a more stable source of income. Mm -hmm. um, I've also have done a few sponsorships in the past. I did one last month, um, but I just got like a stream key for that for a game that I wanted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to buy this game anyway. So it's valuable to me. Um, exactly. You're saving money, ones. you know? Yeah. I have done other ones in the past, but I'm not. Personally, I'm not super big on like the affiliate sponsorship, so I tend to turn down most of them. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have my sponsorship through Gamer Subs, which I've had for about a year and a half now. Um, mm. I typically make um, a couple dollars off of that each month. Um, not usually more than like 50, though. Got it. Got it. I want to. I used to also. Oh, I'll yeah. also mention that like it's not really a thing anymore, but like. Back in, you probably knew too, back in the day, like, um, Instagram had their, like, Reels program. I used oh, to make yeah. money off of that. I don't make money off of there anymore because mm -hmm. I haven't gotten back into their new program. Mm -hmm. um, since I'm not really familiar with it because I had to take some time off, unfortunately, for, yeah. like, my job change, IRL. So I kind of threw a big, like, sh wrench into, like, my streaming plans. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I haven't really reapproached that and... I did used to make some money off of TikTok, but I know TikTok is more geared towards the longer form content now, so I don't make any money off of that anymore mm -hmm. as well. Um, so right now, most of my money is just Twitch. It okay. used to be more diversified, though. So would you say it's <clears throat> about, like, totaling everything together, like you said, five to six hundred? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Norm normal month, five okay. to six hundred. Then I really quick want to tap in on the gamer subs deal really quickly. Mm -hmm. How did that come into play? Did they reach out to you or did you reach out to them or? I reached out. Mm. I reached out to all of the, um, I reached out to all of the energy companies mm. and I wanted to, I wanted to evaluate which one I liked the most first. Cause yeah. I didn't think getting the deal would be too hard. Cause I had already known a lot of friends that I got in the deal. And I think when I approached them, I was around like 
50, 60 average viewers. And I thought I was large enough at that point to get a deal mm-hmm. since they're, they're since it's just a, since it's just a code for discount, it's not like super hard. You're not asking for money straight up to like advertise the brand. So it's not like as difficult to sell yourself in my opinion. Yeah. Um. So I just tried them all and I like, I got the sample packs from all of them and I tried them on my own. And then I like approached the ones that I liked and I was like, Hey, I really like your product. And, you know, I would really like to advertise it. This is like my favorite um, drink. I've, I've seen you um, sponsor other creators that I know and just kind of like brought up all of that. And I just applied regularly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they also, a lot of uh, sponsorships will ask for your metrics for a lot of things. So like, you know, I just included like, Hey, this is like my reach size on all my, all my platforms. So and I just went about it like the standard way, I guess, in my mind. That's smart. Then would you I'm consider- still working right now hmm. to um <clears throat> the next one I want to get personally is Corsair, which I've been trying to do, but I haven't heard back from them yet. <laughs> oh, I wish because you I, the I try best to look. I try to pick um platforms that I like. Yeah. Like obviously since I don't do this full time for income, I'm mm-hmm. trying to pick brands that I'm really passionate about. And I, I really like Corsair products. And I like I have a Corsair mouse, I have a Corsair keyboard. <laughs> um I, at one point I used to have a Corsair headset and I was just like, I would really, really like to get in with them, at least for like just to even even if it's just a discount code for mm-hmm. like my viewers, I would be plenty happy with that even if it only netted like five dollars a month i wouldn't care (laughs) all right well if anybody from corsair is watching (laughs) take notes yeah i know i saw some of the other ones too but um for sponsorships and stuff it's like it's like what you talk about like you need to be the one to push yourself like sometimes people will reach out to you but most of the ones that have reached out to me in particular have been not ones that i wanted to work with personally like if you need the money like sure go for it but I wasn't passionate about it personally, so I just said no. Then, like you said, would you say that most of the people that reach out to you are offering affiliate deals, or do you get people to offer, like, yes. paid deals as well? Mm, usually affiliate deals. I have had a few paid deals, but I didn't. And I think that also falls into the problem. It's something you talk about, too, is, like, how to price yourself. Yeah. And they they wanted things like, hey, I want you to make a TikTok for me. I want you to, like, post on Instagram and, like, they wanted to know my reach and I know my reach on TikTok isn't as good right now because I haven't been posting consistently. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really want to accept it until I built back up my audience. <laughs> I would just say, frick it, take the money anyways. <laughs> I mean, if they're paying you. Yeah. Then- There's always the question though, is like, mm-hmm. you could, I think I was planning if I had, if I had to go back and decide I really wanted to do it, I'd probably go with a um, amount per view. Mm. like this is how much i would charge per view on the video that way i don't feel like i'm over or underpricing myself i would say might be a little bit too open (laughs) i'm i'm super scared about it personally so i I know it's a good idea though yeah it's something i should work on this year though for sure then do you have a rate in mind for a pay per view for yourself of like what you would ask for from a company hmm Probably like a hundred for a TikTok for me. I I don't have a ton of reach, but I'm thinking amount of effort because I guess for an average TikTok, I'm looking at like how much it costs. If I were to pay an editor myself to get it done, it would probably run in the range of like 15 to 50, depending on length, right? Mm -hmm. And I would want to make some profit from that myself as well. Yeah. And then for context, for people who don't know your TikTok following, like how many mm-hmm. followers and like, what would you say your average view on TikTok is? It's really bad right now. I think it's like, let me check I uh, really quick. Cause I, I <laughs> promise for me, TikTok has, I haven't put much effort into mm-hmm. it these days. Um, I have 83K followers, but. You are right acting now, like only... it's so small. <laughs> 83 it is, is a lot. Because the problem is I, I haven't been training TikTok to pick up my videos anymore. Mm. so i have like a lot of variety in uh viewership so like i think right now i only average anywhere between like 2k and 20k views on a video and that's mostly because i haven't trained the algorithm to pick me up anymore well i I would say i took like six months off of posting (laughs) like six solid months off of posting (laughs) 
Still, a so, hundred dollars yeah. is way too low given that the way you were applying. Because I remember, because I've also reviewed your content way back in the day, but it's been a minute, so I forgot oh, the numbers. I know. I was yeah. like on my game though at that point, and mm -hmm. then I like I fell off really hard when I like decided I was like, okay, I um, because I, I I tried. I was working really really hard last year at content creation and stuff, mm -hmm. and I had a lot more time, and I was had things very 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 balanced with like my full time work and my job, and then. Then I lost my job at the start of this year, and then I went, like, full-time into content creation for a while, mm -hmm. and then I got a new job, and I had to move, and then I got really tired, and then I'd, I I gave up the content creation for a little bit for the the stability of my life. Yeah. So I went really, really casual, and I started, like, only streaming, like, twice a week. I wasn't posting videos anywhere. I wasn't editing videos because I wasn't, I wasn't bringing in as much money, so I didn't want to pay editors, so I just wasn't doing anything. <laughs> I mean, life happens. So I, I took it. I took it very, very, very casually for like, mm -hmm. like six months, and then I was like, okay, you know what? This year, I feel like more stable and stuff. Like last month, I changed my schedule for things. I know it like hurt my viewership, but I think it's better overall for like my brand mm -hmm. to uh, change my schedule. Then would so, you say, from your experience being a VTuber, like, are what are some challenges that you feel like you've experienced trying to get sponsorships because of the opportunity difference? Um, or have you felt like maybe no change at all? I would say it's definitely um, harder, I guess, because it's you can't, like, showcase the products on your channel as easily um, mm -hmm. unless you want to do, like, a mixed stream. Which I've, I've looked in doing mixed streams in the, in the future. Like, you, you see some um, VTubers will do, like, streams with like their hands covered up i don't really care about showing my hands personally so i probably will do just a regular mixed stream in the future so if you need to do like unboxing videos you can still show your like vtuber model on the screen while actually showing the real reality of what's happening right because mm -hmm. i i think obviously a lot of sponsors are gonna want to see their product on display right and like yeah. they want you to sell that to your audience so if you're not showing it that's not going to help you <laughs> So if you're not willing to do a mixed media of some form, I think as a VTuber, you might have a more challenging opportunity for getting sponsors. Mm -hmm. But mixed media is super approachable, in my opinion. Like, I know you probably would need a little bit more in your setup for, like, an extra camera. Um, You can always wear gloves. A lot of people wear gloves. You know, they're like, you know, I don't want to show anything. I want to be completely anonymous as a VTuber. And, you know, that's fine. <laughs> and you can still do that while still, you know, approaching those brands and showcasing the product. Mm -hmm. So from your experience, you haven't felt like any challenges getting the sponsorships then? No, I just haven't really. I, I've mostly just been really picky about them personally. Mm. And then I would also like to talk about your Twitch income as well. So as you said, like <laughs> most of your income does come from Twitch. Where you make about $500 to $600 per month off of it. Do you use any like monetization strategies to get subscribers or like donos, etc.? Yeah, I would say so. Um, definitely different months are different, right? Um, mm. I know, like, obviously, it's very common for people to do subathons. I am of the opinion not to do more than two a year. Um, I do them for big events, personally, because, like, subathons are, like, really great for, like, bringing your community together. But at the end of the day, you are asking for money, obviously, to incentivize things in a way, right? You're like, okay, I'm going to... I'm going to do this really wacky stream if we get, like, this many subs or, like... I remember earlier this year, like, I streamed myself drinking pilk. Like, it's a mixed stream. Ew! I, like, no <laughs> way! It wasn't that bad, okay? <laughs> pilk is, like... <gasps> pilk seems disgusting! I thought it was okay. <laughs> but I like milk and Pepsi, so I thought it was fine. I was like, it kind of tastes like a milkshake. But it was, like, you know, watered down. <laughs> That's... Oh my god, you're... I have mad respect for you making that <laughs> one of your goals. <laughs> oh my goodness. Dang, that okay. is so interesting. I thought the I thought the the things that I did that were worse for me. Um, I did things like um like the bean boozle for like every like like every ten subs that like if, if someone donated like ten subs together, I was like, okay, I'll do a bean boozle. But which that's was, worse I than thought, pilk? I thought that was worse. I threw up from one of them. It was pretty bad. <laughs> Oh my god! Um, I mean, to be fair, did, like the vomit and I like, did some the... really crazy things too. Like I did a lot of I've done a lot of exercise redeems, which I haven't streamed, but I just do them off camera, obviously. <laughs> oh, and your community is like okay with it, just I mean, because you're mm -hmm. a YouTuber and stuff. Yeah, I just screamed to them from across the room. <laughs> you're like, oh, pain. <laughs> 
This is the sixty seventh sit up I have to do. I think one of the worst things that I've done for um incentivizing was um shots of pickle juice. I really don't like pickle juice. That's really gross. Dude, it sounds like a community likes torturing you. What the heck? Made a bit. <laughs> Oh my god, these are painful. But these are just like incentives that you do for subathons, right? Mm -hmm. So like, let's say I mean, there's other that. things like you can also do other things that are like longer term goals. Like, mm -hmm. um, I planned, you know, I promised things like, hey, we'll we'll do more community streams if you guys reach this stuff. Like, you know, we'll have like you know Lethal Company on stream mm -hmm. where we play with viewers, or I'll do like Mario Kart or something like that, right? And then mm -hmm. I've also promised things like more challenge runs of like okay, I'm going to do a Pokemon Nuzlocke for once. <laughs> like, I promise that. I still have to do that one. Mm -hmm. um, you can also do things if you're more creative. You know, you can promise, like, hey, I'll, I'll make you a sketch if you if you give this amount or whatever. Or, like, you know, kind of how, like, you, um, if you reach a certain point goal on, like, your channel, like, you can get, like, advice or something like that, mm -hmm. right? You could do, like, more, like, those kind of things within the subathon, right? Mm -hmm. And you can also just do them generally, too. Like, I, there's a lot of streams where I've done, like, horror games where if like you um i tied a lot of like um different sound alerts to different like money amounts so, like if you donated like 100 bits it would play this a sound alert if you donated 200 bits it would play this sound alert for like you know jump scare reasons <laughs> <laughs> um yeah actually there are a lot of points <laughs> yeah there's a lot of ways to torture you oh my god yeah i've also done a lot of punishment wheels where i just like five gifted is is a wheel spin and i put like a bunch of things on there <laughs> I like the monetization strategies you do. And then, like, looking mm -hmm. at the screenshot you sent me, well, I mean, obviously, the one you sent me was from December, which you were promoting mm -hmm. something. But, like, you're making, like, almost $70 in just cheers alone. Yeah. That's I'm also, crazy. like, I'm also, like, I know one of the things for, I guess, I don't want to harp on it too much, but I definitely, like, one of the um, things for smaller streamers, it can be definitely hard to make a more consistent income. I would say because consistently like right I stated like the five to six hundred right because I would say consistently I have about 100 to like 130 subs that always subscribe every month right so that mm. is consistent income and then there's usually a double that for like you know gifted subs so there'll be like another like 100 or like 150 gifted on an average month right which makes up the, the five to six hundred mm -hmm. typically. But then there's other months where, like, you know, people are really generous. Like, you know, they're like, okay, I, I like, you know, Sylvie's having a hard time. You know, she's been working really hard. I'm going to I'm gonna gift her this. Or it's, like, a holiday or a celebration or something. Like, you know, like, I, I stream for, like, my birthday. And I stream for, like, you know, before the holidays. And, like, I've told a lot of people that, like, this model I have now, I've had for two years. And then mm -hmm. I've been also preparing for my new model for a year and a half now. <laughs> but wow. I haven't been able to afford it because of all the things that happened in my real life unfortunately mm -hmm. so i just kept putting it off and putting it off and putting it off oh wait i would love to talk about um the whole like mm -hmm. model thing because this is something that i'm also just like interested in because i am not a vtuber so i don't have a line of sight into how this looks like like mm -hmm. how does the prepping for a new model work because i from what i've seen with vtubers there is so much like marketing material essentially that comes out with like you know a lot of people make like an ost essentially they have like yep. a new art commission etc how does that look like for for you and your new model that you're planning um i didn't quite do everything i'm i wanted to do mm -hmm. um so i would say on average for preparing if you want to do a full-fledged proper VTaber debut you do not have to do everything obviously right mm -hmm. I would I would never tell everyone you need to do all of this stuff if you want to be a real VTuber right mm -hmm. but there there are definitely like different things you can hit that you know can maybe um what I was trying to do personally was consolidate my brand more and I was I was kind of redoing my branding a bit mm -hmm. so I wanted everything to be more uniform in appearance overall Mm. so i'm i'm matching like the new model for everything right so i got like the new model the new model has the like the art i paid for the art like two years ago <laughs> um the rigging i just paid for this month um thanks to you know the incentives from like earlier this year and like you know in september and december mm -hmm. so like that the money from september and december will go towards that <laughs> um i got new emotes for my channel i also commissioned those i i commissioned um because i also need to fill in the animated slots now right I yeah they made so many extra ones. Anyway. 
I, I I was scared when they said that. I was like, uh, I think I had at the time when they announced it, I was like, I think I have twelve. That's more than me. <laughs> and I'm like, I I do not have eight more to fill in. Mm -hmm. And then you can get two more if you start using the Twitch alert stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh no. That means I need like 22 emotes for animated. Animated are so expensive too because they're basically exactly. double a regular emote. I'm like, animated emotes are like a hundred dollars or more a pop. Like, oh my god. <laughs> Wait, I've could you a elaborate? Couple of, oh, sorry. What did you say? I've gotten like a mix of different things. So I've mm. like have I have like custom emotes that I've an gotten animated, right? So I like I full commission them, so they're more expensive. But you can also get like you know um like YCHs, right? What yeah. your characters here, and those are a lot cheaper. <laughs> mm-hmm. So Could you, you elaborate like a little bit on the 50. price of like the stuff that you just mentioned? Like oh. it just it doesn't like, guess because you know probably off the top of your head you might not know the exact number. Um. Oh God, <laughs> you're gonna be so horrified. I mean, it's a lot of art, and so I'm expecting all this art is probably really expensive. If I had to just will, like randomly I will guess, just, like, I will go through everything because yeah. I I don't have a I don't have a full number in, and obviously mm. keep in mind. My all of the money I make from streaming goes back into it, but yeah. also some of my um my own entertainment expenses, like you know, in terms of like this is my fun money from work goes goes into streaming too. Wow. Um, but it's also keep in mind that this is all these are all things that have been spaced out, so I didn't pay all this upfront, right? Like mm -hmm. I've been paying for this since like two summers ago. <laughs> so, um, the art alone for the model is probably in the 2 to 2.5k range the rig is going to be 3.5k which is the biggest expense the rigging is going to be the biggest expense of each but you do not need to go so hard on rigging in my opinion but uh, if mm -hmm. you're going to spend if you're going to spend a lot of money on anything that's where you should spend the money because that will give you the most expressive features and stuff right dude i like, stalked the artist that you sent me and I mm -hmm. am blown away at the quality of their she rigs. so pretty. Yeah. I literally stalked the hell out of them after you sent it to me. <laughs> yeah, the small model I have is, is from her mm -hmm. and, and that rigger. But uh, the model that I have will be from this artist again. Because mm -hmm. I, I like, I've worked with this artist for about two and a half years now. So I, I like her and she's easy to work with for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I got a rigger that I wanted. And then I also, so yeah, I think actually the rigging goes higher because I also put in for, there's a program for vtubing called vbridger that you can have like more expressive facial features mm -hmm. um so if you look at the really really big vtubers right like if you i don't know if you ever saw like buff pups like new model right like how expressive it is oh i have like that if you ever look at that that would give you like a good example for like really like expressive features for mm. vtubing which is like it's not the standard by any meant by any means you do not have to do it but if you want to like push like as hard as you can like this was going to be like my final like update personally mm -hmm. and i'll probably sit on this one for at least two or three years <laughs> so i won't like invest any more money further personally mm -hmm. um so i also paid for that which is another 1k unfortunately so the model overall pushes into like the easily into the six to seven k range which is a lot higher than this model was that i have now how much was this model this, if i may ask this is 3k mm -hmm, 3k okay Wow, that's like yeah. almost like a double jump then from I know. this model to the next one. Wow. Yeah. Um, emotes, emotes cost me. Um, static emotes cost me about eight hundred. Um, mm -hmm. animated emotes I've spaced out pretty heavily, so they're they're like it's like a mixed bag. It's probably about another five to eight hundred. I would say somewhere mm. in that range because some of them are are like YCHs, right? So I only paid maybe like thirty dollars for some of them, and some mm. of the other ones are are more like um custom made so those are closer to like 100 150 mm -hmm. but not all of the I, I spaced them out a bit more to have some like variety in them you know it's also easy and to then, like um, collect the art you know it's like ooh, yeah. rch these oh. are so cute i love yeah. them. yeah <laughs> For reference, for those that are in chat who don't know what YCH is, it stands for your character here, and it's when an emo artist basically has a base. So they'll have like a like a base model blank with like just eyes and like a mouth, and they'll be doing an expression, like maybe like drinking water, and then they will draw your character in that place. So they would draw like mm -hmm. Icy's model with the horns and like you know the hair and everything in in the shape of the base model of them drinking water. Just just for chat who may not know. Oh, somebody's using your emote in chat. It's so cute. <laughs> the peak one. Oh, peak I one. love it. Oh, 
Then did you commission any other artwork besides your um, model yeah. and then the emotes? So I also commissioned I also commissioned um a new starting screen mm. and a I'm gonna use the same screen for BRB and for ending because I don't use those screens as often. I didn't wanna spend extra on additional screens. Um <laughs> And those are those are so that's two art pieces and those are both animated with like text, right? And that mm -hmm. that that was probably about one point five uh, k because I think both were about eight hundred. Mm. Um, I also commissioned um, music um, for the starting screen and for chatting, mm. and that was about four hundred because it's about two hundred a pop for art, for music. <laughs> Wow. And I also commissioned the overlays. Um, so the overlays for for gaming and for like, you know, the the ta like also the coding for like the text chat and stuff like mm -hmm. that as well. Um, that was about four hundred. <laughs> um, and then I commissioned new alerts <laughs> as well. That was also about wow. five hundred. Um and then what else? Um and then I also commissioned new panels as well. That's cheaper. That was only like two hundred because I commissioned some chibis for the panels, and then I commissioned some regular standard panels. So mm -hmm. It was like a mix of panels, <laughs> and then I also got a new schedule graphic. Um, that was included with the overlay set as well. Um, and then I also got a logo again. Logo was about one fifty, I think. <laughs> wow! Bad. All of this is like close, probably close to pushing. It, we're we're we're, we're past 10k past yeah. 10k mm. past 10k for sure it's it's pretty extensive i know a lot of vtubers will also like push really really hard on like a new debut that's why you'll see like a lot of vtubers have like a debut and then a subathon because they're like mm -hmm. you you just invested a lot of money yeah <laughs> unfortunately um and that's why vtubers tend to stick on the same model for a long time too because it just doesn't make sense to throw a bunch of money and just be like okay yeah um not gonna work <laughs> mm -hmm. like obviously i, I want to like be very clear like i since i do this as part-time thing right so like i i invest all of my money that i've made from streaming plus i invest some of my money because i do work full-time as an engineer mm -hmm. I'm, i've been very 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 clear to like most of my audiences that i do work full-time my full-time job is 100 percent my priority it is what pays my rent it was pays my bills it would probably I probably would not have the opportunity to do as much as I do with VTubing mm -hmm. if I did not work personally. Um, mm. And that's, pro that's probably because I don't push myself quite as much as I could, right? Like I could go out and get more sponsorships. I definitely need to push harder on like YouTube because like YouTube is like great money, right? You know, like if you can start making like long form videos, even if you're just making like clip highlights and stuff like that and putting those on there and getting like the watch time, getting monetized is like super helpful. Wow. A lot of videos too. Are, I think a lot of videos that like, I know like you and like, there's a couple other creators I know that do a lot of like help videos and stuff like that. Those are really good to put on YouTube because people will watch them. And even if they don't, even if they don't transition into um, watching your like streams or your content, that will get you the watch time you need for monetization. That's not bad to do for sure. Especially if you know how to do something that someone else doesn't, right? Exactly. Would you, you ever? To, I don't always consider everything as like, you know, I need to do this to grow my stream brand. Like mm. you can grow your other, you don't need to consolidate everything in my mind to your stream. I think it's a nice idea because you like everyone wants to be like a good streamer, right? Mm -hmm. But it's okay for some things to live in isolation, right? Like I would say like for the most part, like for a long time, my tech, like my Instagram lived in isolation, right? Mm. like yeah i know that like people will come and watch the channel from there and they'll be like oh i saw your funny clip on instagram right or like you know maybe they'll see like something really like helpful there and then they'll just like they'll only stay there and especially back when like instagram had its own like reels play program like that yeah. was a lot of good money so it was okay that it lived in isolation right <laughs> yeah the ad program now is really interesting very interesting mm -hmm. because it's so like hit or miss as to whether you get in. It's very, very trippy. So I don't know how they picked me. And a lot of my friends are much bigger than me and they didn't get in. And I I really wish I could be like, ah, this is how you get into the Instagram ad bonus I don't. program. I haven't even looked into it personally. <laughs> it's literally random. It's like you need like 10K followers and then you need to be over 18. And then there's one more requirement and that's it. And then they're like, we're going to randomly give it to people who meet these requirements. And we're not going to tell you who like why you make it and why you don't. 
and there's no application. Yeah, I can't know for sure. Mm -hmm. But I definitely want to say that, like, for anyone that ever wants to consider VTubing, back when I started, um, because I started three years ago. I started three years ago in the middle of the pandemic, right? I was I was super bored. Um, <laughs> I, I like I, I I lost my job at the end of the um twenty twenty mm. and like my boyfriend and stuff, and I was in a really bad spot in life. And I was just like, I want to try something new. I want to like you know like get more interested in my creative pursuits, right? Like I want to try making content. VTubers look really funny. Um, I I tend to have um I never try to talk about like what industry I work in too much because like I am like super recognizable in my industry space unfortunately mm. so I just generally just say I'm an engineer so because I don't want to mix the uh I don't want to mix who I am with with uh content creation too too much because it's like yeah if you just went on LinkedIn you would find me so quick like it's so easy wow <laughs> like it would it would shock me I don't even tell my coworkers I VTube they don't have any idea I would just I would never I told them like once at a former job and they were like oh my god can i add you what's your channel and i'm just oh like, no oh, I, like i talk about some stuff on there i don't know <laughs> yeah, the anonymity like out the window once people irl start mm -hmm. following you the and only you people ever... i tell irl about um content creation is like my hairstylist <gasps> Because I love hair videos, and I always oh. like like talking about like things like, oh my god, did you see the new video by Brad Mondo? I love that stuff. I love his React <laughs> videos, just like watching people f up their hair. It's so funny. I know it's like the like, most guilty pleasure. It's yeah, like, but it's like oh my, because I bleach my own hair sometimes. Lather. Yeah, I'm <laughs> like, like, I, I better not do this. Wait, I then, learned so much about hair from him. Do you often feel anxious about like remaining anonymous? I don't personally worry mm. about it too much. Um, mostly because I don't think I've volunteered quite enough information. And I don't think I'm also big enough. Because I, I do think that if you volunteer a lot of information and if you're really, really nervous about that, I probably would limit more what I would say, right? Mm -hmm. um, and also things for like, if you get bigger, for sure, people will try to find you, right? And I'm not like super big, so I'm not super concerned with it i mean maybe if i got like a stalker like it could happen because i've definitely had friends who have gotten stalkers right and they're like they try to dox their family and like you know they try to find them show up at their house and stuff like that right that's creepy people are weird but man people, people are, are weird. very weird i've personally never had to deal with it so i feel quite lucky in that department i'm um, glad but I, I do think i do think it's a nice like way to do things for me because it's like Maybe it's like a thing like, you know, like how awesome IRL streamers will like cosplay or something right on stream, right? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a streamer persona. So like, you know, it's still me, but I, I feel like a more animated and like expressive when I'm when I have the VTuber and I'm just Aww. like, I don't have to like feel like I always do IRL because I'm like a little bit more reserved IRL because I'm like, you know, I work like in a professional job. So like I try to be like, you know, I got to be all like, you know. <laughs> professional and like on my game and i gotta mm -hmm. like you know talk about science and stuff and i'm like okay can't can't do that on stream <laughs> on stream i'm just like yeah i can just be like you know stupid goofy right oh wait that's really <laughs> sweet it sounds like it's like a nice outlet because mm -hmm. gosh like being professional all the time i i could oh. never do that <laughs> i'm like way too unprofessional it's always weird to me like we, we had like this quiz at work the other day and they were mm -hmm. like do you feel like you can be yourself at work? And I was like, oh, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> What's that mean? Like, what are you supposed to put? Like, you put no? <laughs> I was like, I was like, no comment. This is like, I don't, I just don't picked the me. middle option. I was like, no comment. <laughs> Wait, somebody in chat asked, do you mm -hmm. disguise your voice or worry about people recognizing you because of your voice? Mm, particularly really mm. i i definitely speak in a more animated fashion but i think um i don't like worry about it too much um because like obviously i have like the different like eq on right i think everyone like, kind of eqs their voice for mm -hmm. um for streaming uh, equalizer for um people that don't know what eq is that's just kind of balancing your different vocals like you know making sure it doesn't sound like too deep or too high you know you can maybe cut out some of the nasal in your voice or if you have like a really, really like bassy voice, you could like, you know, lean up on that and make it a bit brighter mm -hmm. or something. 
I don't I don't do any like voice changers or anything. So I just like not too worried about it. If someone does recognize me, I think that would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I've point... heard somebody on stream that sounds like you. <laughs> They're like, whoa. <laughs> They're like, whoa. <laughs> Because I thought about making a VTuber for the point of making a secret alt account. But the problem is people recognize me by my voice. And I've been recognized in public on voice alone when they haven't seen me, oh. but they hear me talk. And they're like, oh, I know it's you. And I'm like, bro. So I feel like if I did that, people would sniff me out of, like immediately. I wonder if it's more recognizable, though, because you're not a VTuber in a way. That's true. Because you see my I, mouth I've move. heard of like people... You know, going like I know I've seen the big VTubers go to like TwitchCon and stuff, and like mm -hmm. people won't recognize them. I've heard. Oh wow! Like Shy Lily or something, right? Like they won't recognize her. No way! Even but I feel like Shy Lily's like, voice you is would quite so, right? noticeable. <laughs> huh. I, so I don't know. Like it's like maybe that's not true. Maybe maybe it is true. I don't know because I I can't imagine. I think also that like. I know for for me, like I think I would probably recognize your voice in person too. But I've like I've heard you on like TikTok so <laughs> many times. <laughs> I like, watch all of your TikToks. I'm like, what is Kat saying today about <laughs> streaming advice? I need to look at this. <laughs> no, I've had it happen so many times. Actually, it's not like a one time occurrence, which is why it's a little concerning for me. I'm like, damn, there goes my anonymous VTuber attempts right there. I do there. think there's also a lot of content creators in um, California, though, in general. That's true. It could also be because of where there's I live. There's definitely, like, a good, like, if I think there's definitely a lot of, like, networking opportunities that are over there more so than other places. Mm -hmm. So, like, you can definitely meet a lot of people, and you might recognize people more often on there. Mm hmm So. Then, question. Would you ever consider going full-time in content creation? I don't think I could. I don't think I would net nearly enough money compared to what I make. Mm. What if what if finances wasn't an issue? Like, what if hypothetically all of your financial needs could be met as a full time creator? I would still be very hard for me mm. personally because I really I like the opportunity not to have to worry about it as like a stressor personally, right? Like, yeah. I have the safety net of my job, right? And then I can just do this when I have the energy for it. And then I don't have to worry about, like, you know, people, like, liking me too much or picking, like, a wrong game choice or stuff. Because, like, I already worry about quite a lot of things for content creation. I'm like, oh, well, my community like this game. Um, Like, you know, maybe I'm straying too far away from my brand. Like, I haven't even been playing, like, for a long time. I used to, I built, like, a strong portion of my community based off, like, Souls games, right? Mm-hmm. But I haven't played them in a while because they weren't performing very well anymore. And I was just like, maybe, maybe I've lost that part of my community. Maybe they, maybe the, you know, the, there's no strength in that, that brand right now because like, it's kind of a down point where it's like, there's been a lot of like, maybe Souls-like games that have come out, but Souls-like games are not nearly as popular as the main brand. Mm. And so a lot of people I think are waiting for the DLC right now. So like, it'll probably pick up when the DLC comes out. Mm -hmm. And I don't also, you have to think about things like, um, I don't particularly care for challenge runs too, too much, personally. And I didn't, I had already played all of them. So I played all of them on stream and then I was like, what do I do? <laughs> You're like, I I'm devoid of anything, any purpose now. <laughs> I cannot do anything now. Because <laughs> mm. I, I, I one of the things that I love about streaming is like sharing like the first time playing a game with mm. my community, with them. Because I know a lot of them have, like, played games already, and I haven't played them, and I'm just like, oh. It's just, like, there's definitely, like, a higher value, I think, in um, watching that kind of stuff. I know, like, a lot of people, like, I know I stream during uh, my subathon. I streamed Final Fantasy XIV, which I had basically retired from. Um, I used to play a lot. I, I was, um, I played for two and a half years uh, before VTubing. I quit maybe about, um, about three to six months before the end of 2020 um i stopped playing it mm -hmm. mostly because i was playing um in the end game completely and i was playing hard i was only doing hardcore rating and i was like this really feels like a job because i was hardcore I was, on soul dark souls man that's crazy oh no final fantasy 14 oh, 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 oh. My yeah. weird, i was still thinking no, of dark no, souls no. i was like <laughs> no 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 not dark souls anymore um but yeah i was like i was going to work and, mm -hmm. like, that was obviously during COVID. So, like, I was working at home, and then I was getting on my computer, and then I was 
I was reading for like six hours and then I was going to bed and I was like, this is who that's crazy. And I, I, I would just like, I felt like I was stressing myself out so bad, but I, I brought, I brought back the game to stream it at the start of this year because mm -hmm. I wanted to experience the story again with my community. So I know oh. that there's a lot, a lot of strong base in the story, you know? And I was like, even though I am tired of doing the, the end game, it doesn't mean I'm tired of the story. <laughs> Wait, that is so cute. Oh, I'm glad you could get like mm -hmm. a second chance of like getting mm -hmm. more love for the game again, you know? Especially like after getting so worn down from doing the end game. I feel like that's really common with a lot of games where like you love the game and you just play the hell out of it. Yeah. Where you're like, eh, I'm kind of done with this. That is so I almost sweet. wondered for a while too during my subathon if people liked me more when I was sleeping. Because I used to have on. I, I have, like, a lot of interest in mm. uh, restoration videos, so I just put on restoration videos while I was sleeping. <laughs> and there were so many people that followed me while I was sleeping, and I was like, this isn't what my content is about, by the way. <laughs> I'm literally... They, they got you baited. <laughs> I'm going to start restoring on stream. Maybe that's, maybe that's the path forward. You know, mm. maybe one day I'll be into, like, mixed media more or something. That I find it very really interesting, fun. you know? Like, cause I mean, if you think about it, like there's, there's so many ways you could like monetize yourself, right? Like, you know, you think about like those channels that do the like, restoration, they make video, they make a lot of money off of that, right? Like people mm -hmm. will send them like destroyed stuff and they just, not only do they clean it and restore it and get paid for that, they also make money off the video, right? Mm -hmm. So like, there's lots of opportunities for like mixed stuff. Like you don't even have to show your face for that. <laughs> like Ooh. most of those videos have like no dialogue whatsoever. <laughs> Wait, I you literally like are answering questions that I was gonna ask you. I was literally gonna ask, like, are there any other monetization avenues you're considering? You're like out here talking about restoration videos. <laughs> I mean, I think crafts and stuff are like great opportunities. Yeah. Like, I would love to get into crafts again and do like a mixed media form of some sort because, like, you can definitely just like if you don't want to like show your face, you can show like your hands, right? And mm -hmm. there's so many things you can do with your hands, right? Like, you think about like, okay, you know, I can like, you can do like. Even if I wanted to like mix like my my love of engineering with like VTubing, I'd be like, okay, I can take apart like this like appliance and I can restore it, right? Or I can fix it, and then or I can mm -hmm. do something else like you know, you know, people can do like more traditional art. Like traditional art isn't really shown as much, obviously, on Twitch, right? Yeah, because digital art is like so prevalent now, and like you know, it's like how you how you monetize like yourself, right? Like you have all these like things from like Etsy, right? Like you've done all these like, different arts. Like you have like I have all these different emos that people can use or you can like you know make stream overlays or you know you can make like prints or something and mm -hmm. you can monetize those and then you can always obviously stream that stuff too if you wanted and then you monetizing that as well in a way right yeah there are a lot of people that are super okay with just like you know chilling on an art stream and just like not not really worrying about like too much interaction <laughs> there's no, a lot of people that I will love watch streams. streams and work at the same time that you're yeah working. No, the restoration stream sounds so fun because I feel like I have not seen that type of content. And yeah. I would love to see it because that stuff's like when they show up on your For You page or whatever, uh -huh. it's like, ooh, it's like addicting to watch. I love it so much. I just have to think about which one I would want to do, like in terms of restoring. Because there's like some restoration that's probably a little bit beyond me. Mm. Um, I know, obviously, I know a little bit more about like electronics and stuff because I have the engineering background. So I took like different classes, like, you know, like circuit design and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So like I kind of know how like, uh, PCB word work so I could probably do that and I know how to solder and stuff like that as well so I do generally know how to do some of that stuff but if it was like restoration on like a more metal like component of some sort I wouldn't really know how to fix that <laughs> <laughs> that's what Google's for YouTube yeah I've seen people like do like restoration I think I saw like restoration on like a meat grinder or something right I was like I, I wouldn't have any of the stuff for this right that's crazy what and yeah, I'm also trying to like, you know, I got to consider like, I live in an apartment. <laughs> Your neighbors so, are going to think you like murdered somebody. Yeah, I don't so think you I bring can really do like the heavy grinder. duty stuff. <laughs> and they're like, uh. <laughs> yeah, it would definitely have to be something I could do it like at my desk, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially because like, with, cause, like if it's a larger project, you're going to end up showing more mm -hmm. than your hands. And for anonymity reasons, that's probably very scary and probably not ideal. Yeah. So, like, you would want to do something maybe more smaller scale. So, you don't need to do big scale stuff. Because I think a lot of the big scale stuff, a lot of those people tend to have, like, workshops and stuff. So, they mm. do it in, like, the garage. And it's like, I don't have a garage. You're like, garage <laughs> where? where? I, I live in an apartment. What garage? 
Then besides restoration, are there any other monetization opportunities you've been considering? Um, or are you satisfied with your monetization for your content? No, I'm, I'm definitely pushing this year. Um, definitely YouTube is my my biggest focus for this mm -hmm. year personally. Um, because I, I for probably once like this debut is passed because I am um, I I have at this point, um, I think I only have one more payment of something for um the debut and mm -hmm. that'll be like next month. So I, I tend to space out all my payments, right? Cause I, I take some of, I take like my stream money and I take like the five to 600 or whatever I get. Mm -hmm. And then I add like five to a hundred, a thousand of my own money <laughs> into wow. that. So a lot of it is my own money. <laughs> do you budget but your I, own money for this? I do. Mm -hmm. I, I always keep like, I, all the money I need, right? So I have to pay for it. Like I pay for my rent first, mm -hmm. you know, and then I pay for all my bills. Like I have my car insurance and then like, you know, all the Adulting other insurances. Things. Adulting things. <laughs> like I pay for my food expenses. I got to pay for the kitties, you know. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I got to go to the vet and stuff too. And I got to eat a lot of food. They eat a lot of food. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can, I recently switched my cats over to like wet food diet. So like, it's like way more expensive. <laughs> oh, I need to do that with it's, my cat soon. He's on it's so much better currently. for their health. Yeah. If you wanted to not, like, what I, what I was doing was I, I'm doing, like, right now in particular, I'm doing, like, a mix. Because um, mm -hmm. I, I, I've had some, my cat, I don't really talk about it too much, but my cat was having ha, has been having some health problems for a couple oh. years. And it's been getting a little bit more aggravated um, the last couple of months since I moved. Mm -hmm. So he's been making kind of this, like, hacking noise, and I think his heart murmur is getting worse. Oh. Um, so he's going to the vet again later this month. And then... I was trying to improve his diet, you know, because, like, obviously I should do everything I can do on my end, right? Yeah. So, like, I obviously have budget for that. And I'm like, okay, you know what I'm going to do is, like, instead of – um, I'd send to see him. He throws up a lot right now, um, oh. dry food. So I try to not do dry food on its own ever. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll do wet food um, in the morning, and then I'll do wet mixed with dry. That mm. way it cuts the budget a little bit. So it's not full dry because like obviously subsidizing dry food, dry food's so cheap. Yeah. But dry food is also unfortunately full of fillers. <laughs> um, so I, I do like a mix that way it stays like, you know, the dry food gets moist, but it also kind of fills in the food while, you know, not killing my wallet. Yeah. I heard like the mix is But he is tends good. to keep it down. He keeps mm -hmm. it down better that way. So he's doing a bit better these days um, on that kind of diet compared to what he was doing before. Mm -hmm. So I obviously take into a lot of other considerations, like, before I, like, throw my money at VTubing. I'm just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> obviously, the animals I take care of are probably a little bit higher priority than the, the funny <laughs> anime the girl model, model I want to get. <laughs> because, oh, I, I mean, that stuff can always be pushed off, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it, I do, I am in a spot right now with VTubing that if I were to be like, you know what? screw this debut i don't want to spend any more money i only want to make money from content creation i i don't think i would ever really need it you know mm -hmm. like you don't need something new fancy every couple of years but it's fun <laughs> it's fun i it's mean nice for me i do it because i am be honest i'm just a huge freaking weeb i love being an anime girl online <laughs> i'm honestly who would it like your model is so cute oh I get jealous when I see VT rip. I'm like, I want a pretty VT rip model. But I'm branded off my face, so I kind of can't. Uh, hey. I mean, you could do like, what? You could do what like Lily Petrie did, right? Lily Petrie has one that's like based yeah. off of her. I was going to do it, but I'm just, because I wanted to do it myself because I can mm -hmm. make art, but it's one of those like, now the problem that's is when you're an artist, the oh. world is your oyster. So now what do I decide on for a model? Because I can make anything theoretically. Yeah, but you can <laughs> think about that. You can use that as additional marketing on your True. account and then you can make money off of my process of making a vtuber model of me <laughs> and yeah, you can learn about VTuber it model don't all, yeah you can learn all about all of that because it's like a huge freaking effort honestly it's like you, learn, yeah. you have to learn how to separate your layers for the artwork and then you gotta learn about the rigging and then no, the rigging all is... that stuff uh. oh my God. the rigging is hard yeah <laughs> that seems so painful yeah right. it's like even oh, looking so. at like the model that I have getting soon, it's mm -hmm. like it's got like over a thousand layers. It's just like, oh my god, this model! It's so heavy on my PC to open it. The model's gonna be like, e -e 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 -e. it's like all laggy. Yeah. 
Well, normally yeah. they'll, they'll consult. Normally, when they do the rig itself, they mm -hmm. um they merge some of the layers. Oh, but okay. the, it's better if they're fully separated to start, so that the rigger can merge layers that they need. So it doesn't wind up being a thousand layers when it's running. <laughs> wow, I need to do some research on how to make YouTube models. Oh, and for context, for those of you guys that just joined stream. Um, I see Sylvie's current model is about three thousand dollars, and they're commissioning an entire new, like, new model, which is about six thousand dollars, not including other promo materials. For those that are curious, that are just coming in, because we did talk about that earlier in the vod. Mm -hmm. Um, but final question for you: What do you feel like your biggest struggles of monetization have been as a creator? Mm. My biggest struggles. Mm -hmm. I want to say um, I definitely feel like I continuously struggle to incentivize people to want to sub to mm. my channel. Um, I think in a lot of ways as a VTuber and a content creator, there's a lot of cool things that you can do to get gifted subs. But I always wonder what I can offer more other than just like, yeah, you get to watch my channel without ads and you get emotes. <laughs> And watch you suffer if you hit the goal. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, what can I give to my viewers to to want to continuously come to this channel and, you know, spend money on me every month? Because, like, I know there's always the joke about, like, there was that one crazy chick, right? Who was like, oh, my God, I can't believe you can't spend $5 yeah. on me. But it's just like, gosh, I, I, I've been in, like, so many situations in my life where I didn't even have, like, $5 to give to anyone like back when I lost my job I canceled all of my subs to people right I was like mm -hmm. I I can barely feed myself I'm going to food banks like I, <laughs> like who has five dollars to give to a content creator it doesn't matter how much I love them but it's so it's like what can I do to give to my audience that makes the value of their money you know worth it mm -hmm. right because like even like you know sure maybe it's just five dollars but like you know they could also just spend that money on something that gives them a lot of joy right like you know maybe they maybe they splurge and they're like oh i really love you know getting like starbucks or something and like starbucks is too expensive for me most times you know mm -hmm. and like maybe they are like yeah i want to spend my money on that you know yeah so i'm, I'm always wondering like what can i do because so i know i know obviously with like you know the creation of like the partner plus program i know a lot of creators have tried to join that and i i would obviously love to join that at some point if i ever get big enough as well mm -hmm. because that is a very stable way to monetize yourself right like if you have like 350 sub points and you're getting 70 30 instead of 50 50 off that mm -hmm. that is massive oh yeah that's like game changing amounts of money for a lot of people it is because like that jump you lose like hundreds to thousands because of the mm -hmm. freaking 70 30, like the 50 50 versus 70 30 split and it's just at twitch man <laughs> pain all right finally can you shout yourself out where can we find you on all of your social medias you can find me on all of my <laughs> socials as icy sylvie especially on twitch.tv slash icy sylvie <laughs> yes and you're streaming three more times this week right i saw your schedule which was really pretty Two i am times, streaming times? four times this week four. i have um, i can't count <laughs> yeah so i was i was initially streaming i, I had dropped down to two days per week mm. um back when I was like, you know, transitioning to my new job uh, full time. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've decided to bring back uh, four days a week. Um, I know it will be hard, um, but I'm doing two days after work. So I'll be streaming at, uh, I moved it to 7 p.m. Eastern because mm -hmm. I can't quite make it home in time for 6 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to leave the office by five and make it home in time for 6 p.m. stream. Cause yeah, I, cause I, time disappears. Like you drive and you gotta change and then, oh shoot, food. There oh. was, there was one day I like left the office at five mm -hmm. and I only live like three miles from the office. Like I live really wow, you're close. close, but it is highway traffic. And, um, yeah, I got stuck <laughs> and I went to pick up food. So I got home 15 minutes before I was supposed to start stream. So it took me 45 minutes to get home and I only live three miles. What? And I was just like, yeah, maybe 6 p.m. is a little bit hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Welcome to the 7 p.m. gang. I've always so been a 7 p.m. Go streamer. 7 p.m. gang. Yeah, <laughs> we're going back to 7 p.m. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll stream at different times if I'm collabing with somebody, right? Like, I'll make it work. 
Mm-hmm. But yeah, 7 p.m. during the week um, and 2 p.m. on weekdays or weekends, I mean, because I, I decided to move my weekends too because I was streaming in the morning slot mm-hmm. and I found that a lot of my audience personally is European and oh. I was like, I really need to make sure I try to appeal more to a North America again. Um, mm-hmm. so for a long time, personally, I was like, uh, I don't feel like North Americans like me, maybe. And maybe that's because I spent a lot of my personal life um, interacting with Europeans, actually. Oh. And that kind of comes across a little bit, I think. Well, I wonder um, if all your friends are European. <laughs> It's very weird because I spent a lot of my life, um, like I lived abroad mm. for part of my life um, in Germany for work. And I think that comes across. And then I also worked for a lot of European companies. So and obviously, even as a streamer, even if you're trying to like, you know, hide your identity, obviously your personality and your habits and stuff, they will come across no yeah. matter what. So I think a lot of people have always kind of thought that I didn't really act like I was from America. So I was worried they didn't really like me for that reason oh but i mean your explanation makes a lot of sense though with you yeah. know like the fact that you literally lived and worked abroad mm-hmm. and plus like because you're streaming at a later i would still argue that like 7 p.m est isn't even late enough for the europeans to like develop like a fully european late, yeah. audience but still like, think, it is relatively i figured later. yeah i figured 7 p.m is is good enough to um you know, get enough sleep before work and also like, you know, push my brand more and, mm-hmm. you know, build an audience that's uh, more <laughs> North American based. And then also that I moved my because I, I was streaming at like a 9 a.m. on the weekends. And I think that is way too early. for North Oh, America. that is really early. <laughs> wow. You're so, only because that's like 6 a.m. for me. <laughs> yeah. So I pushed I pushed it to 2 p.m. And I was like, OK, 2 p.m. Then I'm not alienating Europe, but I'm still more approachable to North America. <laughs> That's smart, honestly. <laughs> Though I, I always, I am of the opinion that if you can, if you can do it, you know, um, go into streaming with like a game plan, you know, um, I, I change things up too much personally, in my mm-hmm. opinion, and I feel somewhat obligated to respect what I have. Mm-hmm. And that does limit me in some ways to do things. And if you go into things with a game plan, like, you know, pick a schedule that you want, you know, like look at different games that you want to like you know you know get invested into and like learn about those communities and stuff and then you can obviously build from there to like learn how to monetize yourself and that stuff and that's generally my my overall advice for that kind of stuff right Mm -hmm. because I think for streaming if you have the same time every day that you stream you're definitely easier to have people watch you because they they know that consistency is there (laughs) For sure. It doesn't, it doesn't even have to be a lot of days. Like, I, I, I would say, like, if you're going to start out streaming two, two to three days a week, it's probably good enough. There's some banger advice out here. Chat, listen up. <laughs> <laughs> Consistency. I just, my, that's my experience from the three years that I've done it. And I, I obviously, I don't do it full time. I think if they're, like, like you said, like, if I wanted to, I think I could probably push myself to do it. I would, if I were to change things overall, like if I were willing to be like more risk taking in life, I'd probably move somewhere else for sure Mm -hmm. so that my cost of living would go down. And then I think it would be way more feasible to go full time. Like right now, it just wouldn't be feasible for me because I spend like 2.2K a month on rent and I can't pay that from streaming. So I wouldn't even be able to afford to keep a roof over my head and I would not be a good situation to get into wow (laughs) i used to have that much for rent my rent also used to be 2.2k and i literally moved for the same reason where it was like it also was like i could afford this but i live in a major city so so. painful (laughs) that it's like oh my god 2.2k for rent is crazy i bet like i said like if you if you have that like if you know if you still live like your parents if you live with like a partner um obviously those expenses will go down and then like you know, if you move somewhere else where the, you know, where you have like more opportunities for like cost of living. Cause like there, if I had definitely, if I hadn't like left and moved here for like work um, and I had stayed where I was at, I think I could have even downsized and maybe paid like, I was paying like 1.3 K in rent and I was living by myself. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I could have like, if I really wanted to like cut costs and be like, yeah, I'm going to live full time and live super frugal and stuff like that. I think I could have cut rent to like seven or 800. And wow. Live in, like, a, like a studio or like a one bed by myself even or you can get roommates right Mm -hmm. 
and stuff like that. And as long as your roommates are like okay with it, I know a lot of streamers that live with roommates, right? But you know, you gotta you gotta work that out. <laughs> Yeah, especially because, like, streaming sure. is so annoying for people. Like, I thankfully oh, yeah. live with two other people that either stream or used to stream. So, so it makes understand. it easier. They get it. But, like, living in with people who aren't streamers, it's you're, like, screaming for four hours straight, like, three, four, I mean, five soundproofing, days I mean, soundproofing is probably uh, pretty expensive if you want it to be. Or, but it can also be pretty cheap. I, if you spend, like, two to three hundred on soundproofing your room, you, you should be okay. Mm. <laughs> If you really want to be super respectable and you're not in a, the best situation and you want to, you know, do that. I did that um, because I actually, the last place I lived, I got noise complaints. <laughs> oh, no. So I soundproofed my room. <gasps> I spent, um, I spent 300. I, I got the, like, I got two different foam. I got, like, the, the foam, like, pyramids. And then I also got the, uh, the, the foam for the backside as well. Mm. For, like, so I did the, I had the sound absorbing foam and the sound, like, deadening foam. And that was enough not to get any other complaints. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. So if you ever, if any of you guys ever get told that you're too loud, um, yeah, don't ignore it and just spend, <laughs> spend like a hundred bucks and just, just take care of it. <laughs> yeah. A hundred bucks. And then the it will serve you very well. And you can reuse all this stuff. So like, even if you move and have to take it down, it's reusable. <laughs> That's amazing. No, literally, I reuse my foam, too. Although, like, yep. in my old apartment, my room actually touched the trash chute. So I, thankfully, oh. had no sound issues because I did not touch another, uh, like, another apartment unit. Yeah, I think my biggest problem that I had was that, um, for me, the room that I was in at the time, I was, I had the, um, like, the central air, like, duck above oh. my, um... <laughs> I had it above oh, my computer so it was like hitting that and bouncing up into the ceiling oh, into man. the apartment above me and that's why it was so loud for them and it was just bad placement you know yeah it's like I mean obviously if you can think about that stuff and like you know plan your streaming around that, mm. that's that's great but I I didn't at the time so like maybe if even if I had moved to maybe it's like the opposite wall or something that might have been better mm -hmm. that is <laughs> obviously crazy. I don't have that problem now where I'm at because like I have higher ceilings and there's like not any kind of like vents or anything there so mm -hmm. like there's no there's no follow up into that. I, honestly, I've like from what I've heard of like even my neighbors because like my one neighbor below me has, has like a baby and I can hear a baby cry and I can barely hear it. So I don't think they're really too worried about me screaming. <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm glad at least like the noise situation is like over for you and then oh, yeah. there's no more noise complaints with your soundproofing. Oh. Yeah, there's definitely a, a lot of considerations that go into streaming for sure, even as a VTuber. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Icy mm -hmm. Sylvie. Thank you for being so patient with all the tech issues, by the way. Yeah, I no appreciate problem. you so much for that. It was a struggle to get the stream started earlier. Yeah, I'm super interested in watching the uh, next interviewee as well. I yeah, love we have Neil coming things. on at nine, which is in 45 minutes. But I think oh, Neil's wow. in chat, so we might be able to do it sooner if he's willing. Yeah, because I, I definitely want to learn new things. Because, like, I always look at, like, for anyone that's, like, in the chat, like, I, I look at your doc all the time for all oh. the sponsorships. <laughs> I'm like, which, which of these which of these ones do I want to approach myself? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, using these interviews, like, not only as, like, you know, spreading the word of, like, content and stuff like that and, like, breaking the transparency barrier, but mm -hmm. also, like, so I can get more content, too, to make. Because I'm now, like, interviewing you and other creators. I know your you guys' pain points, and then I can make content that would help fill the pain points that you guys are experiencing. So I'm, like, yeah, I think definitely more content. Obviously, my biggest pain point would be like I we we talked about it already, like how to price yourself for when approaching sponsors and mm -hmm. when sponsors approach you, because it's like you can already see that I tried to undersell myself. You're just like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm just like, Ugh, well, I don't want to ask for too much money, and mm -hmm. then they're gonna say no. Are they gonna say no if I ask for too much money, or will they try to pull me down? I don't know, mm -hmm. um, because that's just a a lack of experience, or like you know maybe I don't. You know, you have to always think about like, what am I offering to them? You know, mm -hmm. and um, I think for stuff like that, I definitely also try to approach sponsors that I think I can sell better. So it's like, hey, this is what like for like for you, like I would say, um, probably a lot of sponsors like that. You know, a lot of other content creators watch you, so that they, you can market to them, right? You're like, mm -hmm. hey, I have this is what my audience base looks like. This is you know, this is who I'm selling to, and uh, this is who I can how much reach I can get for this kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. and it can maybe be a bit hard, too, as, like, a gaming content creator because it's, like, well, wh what do they need? They need gaming peripherals and stuff like that. They're going to buy them anyway, aren't they? <laughs> it's like, uh, 
gotta, yeah, it's like hard in a way maybe to think about like, how am I going to market this mm -hmm. to my audience? And like, what am I bringing value into them in their brand? Mm. And that can be hard to think about as, um, as a more gaming centric content creator, for sure. Noted. I think it's easier. It's definitely easier. Like, I think obviously, you know, you think about like, we, we talked about like Brad Mondo and like hair stuff, yeah. right? Like you can think, oh, okay, well, if I was into more like real life content and doing like hair and stuff like that, like I could do a lot, a lot of more beauty sponsorships, right? Or I could do clothing and I could showcase those on my channel and stuff like that, right? But I mm -hmm. obviously don't show myself and most of my audience is male. So like, why would they fucking care about hair products? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, guys why? can use hair products too. Gel, pomade, anti-balding treatment i don't know <laughs> manscaped <laughs> time to get my sponsorship with man oh about the manscape bro freaking dead 